Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel, and um, the paper that I'm going to be going through now is the International A Level Edexcel um, Pearson's Statistics S1 from October 2021. I'm going to be going through each question one by one, making a separate video for each question and collating them in playlists according to the topic as well as the paper. Um, I'll start with question number one, which is about probability. It says the Venn diagram shows events A, B, and C and their associated probabilities where P and Q are probabilities here. Find P, B. Find the probability of B. Okay, so we need to find the probability of the event B. Now, the, the event B is this over here. This is the event B, this over here. Okay, now, as we can see, the probability of all the events all together has to equal 1. And if you take all of B together, all of B together is going to be what's left over from 1 um, if you add up these together. So basically, the whole thing is 1. What's missing here is the probability of the whole of B. So if we don't include the 0 0.3 in our calculation, we can say the probability of B is equal to the whole thing which is 1 take away the other probabilities of what's outside of b which is 0 0.04 plus so I'll do it like this 0 0.06 plus 0 0.4 okay 0 0.4 0 0.04 is just for this part of a 0 0.06 0 0 is for this part of c here and 0 0.4 is what's outside of the two circles so those two added together plus 0 0.4 have to add up with b to give you 1 so this is going to become 1 minus, that's going to give you 0 0.1 plus 0 0.4. One second. That's going to equal 1 minus 0 0.4, 0 0.1 plus 0 0.4, which is 0 0.5. So we can say, therefore, the probability of B is equal to 0 0.5. So there's the answer to part A. Now, for part B, it says determine whether or not A and B are independent. Now... A and B are independent if the probability of A times the probability of B is equal to the probability of A into section B. Okay, so if this is true, then we can say A and B are independent. If it's not true, then they are not independent. Okay, so let's just write that statement down. So that means we need to find the probability of A and we need to find the probability of B and multiply them together and therefore we also need to know the probability of A in section B. So we know the probability of B already, we just found it in the previous question, is 0 0.5. Now the probability of A, the probability of all of A here is basically going to be um, 1 minus the sum of those two. So it's 1 minus 0 0.3 plus 0 0.4 which is going to be 1 minus 0 0.7 which is 0 0.3. So we know the probability of A is equal to 0 0.3 now we need the probability of a intersection b okay now a intersection b is basically these two p and q together it's basically p plus q together and we can see that if we take away all of these other probabilities from one we're left with p and q so we're going to have one minus the sum of 0 0.04 plus 0 0.06 plus 0 0.3 plus 0 0.4. So this is 1 minus, that's going to be 0 0.1 plus 0 0.3, which is 0 0.4 plus 0 0.4, which is 0 0.8. So 1 minus 0 0.8, which is 0 0.2. So we can see here very clearly that the probability of A times the probability of B is going to be 0 0.3 times 0 0.5, which is 0 0.15. And we can see here that the probability of A intersection B, as we just worked out, is equal to 0 0.2. So we can see that they are not independent. Okay, so probability of A times the probability of B is not equal to the probability of A intersection B. Therefore, we can say A and B are not independent. If they were independent, then the probabilities of each of them separately will equal 
the same as the probability of the intersection. Okay, so that's part B done. Okay, so that's part B. Now for part C. It says given that P, given that P, the probability of C given B is equal to the probability of C, find the value of P and Q. All right, so now, basically, what they're trying to tell us here is that the events C and B are independent. That's another way of saying they're independent, and I'll show you why. Because we know the probability of, sorry, C given B, the probability of C given B is equal to the probability of the intersection of C and B divided by the probability of B. That's what that means. Okay, and we can see here that this is equal to C. So I can rewrite this as the probability of C is equal to the probability of C intersection B over the probability of B. And if I rearrange this, I can multiply both sides by probability of B. I'm, I'm left with the probability of B times the probability of C is equal to the probability of C intersection B. So therefore, we can say B and C are independent. Okay, you don't have to show this kind of proof, you could say, because we, we can, this is another way of saying they're independent. So we can deduce that they're independent. Now, if they're, indi if they're independent, then therefore this is true. Okay, so if I can now work out what the probability of B is, which I know, it's 0 0.5 from the last question. And if I can work out what the probability of C is, which I know in terms of P, it C is this circle here, so it's 0 0.06 plus P. And the probability of B intersection C, or I'll write it as the probability of C intersection B, okay, is the intersection between B and C. Well, it's just P, isn't it? C and B, it's just P. So I can come up with an equation to find P, because I know that this is true. So the probability of B, which is 0 0.5, times the probability of C, which is 0 0.06 plus P, is equal to P. So that's going to find what P is. So 0 0.5 times 0 0.06 is 0 0.03 plus 0 0.5 times P equals P. We can subtract 0 0.5 from both sides. So we have 0 0.5 P equals 0 0.03. And if I multiply both sides by 2, I'll get rid of this a half P and leave me with P. Multiply that side by 2, you get 0 0.06. So we can say, therefore, P is equal to 0 0.06. So we found what P is. Okay, that's one of the answers that we had to find. And the other one is the value of Q. Well, we know that P plus Q, okay, is this part of um, B. So we can say P plus Q is equal to 0 0.5. So we can say P plus Q is equal to the probability of B minus 0 0.3. Okay, because the whole thing here is 0 0.2. So these two together must add up to 0 0.2, that means. Okay, so I know that, therefore, if P plus Q equals 0 0.2, then Q is going to be 0 0.2 minus P, which is minus 0 0.06. So Q is going to be 2, that's going to be 0 0.14. 0 0.14. And there's the answer. That's found P. We've now found P and Q in part C. Okay, so basically, this is another way of saying that they're independent. And we kind of proved that here. And if they're independent, then the probability of B times the probability of C is equal to the probability of the intersection between them. And that's what we used here to find P and then Q. Then part uh, D it says the event D is such that A and D are mutually exclusive and the probability of B intersection D is greater than zero. Now, if A and D are mutually exclusive, then A and D cannot be intersecting at all. Okay, A and D have no intersection. So D cannot be anywhere inside A or intersecting A in any way. So it has to be not touching or not inside A. But the probability of B intersection D is greater than zero. That means that D and B can intersect. Now they can intersect either like this or like this. There, can, there has to be some sort of intersection between them. All right. And um, either of those are fine. So I'll just draw it like that, but even if you draw the D so that intersects with B, not all contained within it, that's also fine. Okay, so either of those two will be fine. And that's all we have to do for part D. Just draw a circle with and label it D. And, um, you know, show one of those 
possible. It has to be, it can't be completely outside B. All right, it can't be completely outside B. It has to touch B somehow, it has to be intersected with B or inside D B, but it can't intersect with or be inside A at all. Okay, because it's mutually exclusive from A. So there's no intersection between them. And there's the answer to part B, or part D, sorry, and that concludes our um, question number one. Other questions from this S1 paper from October 2021 can be found in the link that should appear somewhere in this area at the end of this video. Other questions from um, this particular topic of probability from S1 can be found in this video or this playlist that should appear, the link for which should appear over here in this area. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on the link in the middle of the page. Thank you for watching and see you soon.